The next item of business is a member's debate on motion 2327 in the name of Liz Smith on the STEP Physical Literacy Programme. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Will those members who wish to speak in the debate please press their request to speak buttons now? And I call on Ms Smith to open the debate. Ms Smith, seven minutes or thereabouts, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I'm really uh, delighted to propose this motion. And as I do so, I would like to thank all the members uh, who have given me the requisite cross-party support to host today's debate and also to welcome Kenny Logan and his step team uh, to the gallery. Kenny Logan, who has not only become an excellent ambassador for our young people as being a great star of Scottish rugby, but who has very bravely, in my opinion, shared his own story of his struggle with dyslexia throughout his school years. Many of you will have heard his very moving interview on Radio Scotland some weeks ago when he told us about the experience of the stigma of living with an undiagnosed learning disability. And more importantly, how this experience led him, in his own words, to be labelled stupid by a teacher and then to go on and leave school at 15 without ever reaching his full potential. And he has spoken passionately about he, how he would have benefited from a programme such as STEP and that this has fuelled his determination to ensure that every child has the opportunity to improve their physical literacy. The STEP programme is a bespoke school-based literacy programme aimed at pupils in primaries four and five, helping to develop the children the fundamental skills needed to learn successfully. Physical literacy assesses a child's core physical capabilities and is thus different from general physical education or sport. We know only too well that for many children, basic learning skills such as sitting still, maintaining concentration or physically following letters when reading is not an automatic task and an inability to do these things usually means that they are at an immediate disadvantage in the classroom. The STEP programme focuses on tackling this by improving three main skills, balance, eye tracking and coordination. Each pupil completes two short exercises foc focusing upon one or more of these skills. It's been shown to have benefits for almost every pupil, but the greatest impact is shown on those in the lower quintile of classroom performance. It is completed twice a day during the school week, overseen by a trained member of staff, such as a learning assistant or a teacher with additional needs specialism. The huge advantage is the fact that the STEP programme is highly personalised, so that each child enrolled can focus on particular strengths and weaknesses. And this is what makes it unique amongst other physical literacy programmes. The accompanying software platform can be delivered online and the software used generates exercises specifically for an individual pupil based on their previous day's performance. And because that programme is personalised, pupils do not have to compete against each other, but they are made aware of the daily improvements that they're making themselves. As members know, the programme has already been successfully used in both England and the United States, and it has been empirically evidenced to reduce the attainment gap in primary school pupils. Pupils who have completed STEP have shown significant improvements academically, behaviourally, physically and socially. A UK pilot last year compared over 100 below attainment primary school pupils who were on the STEP programme to a group in the same attainment level who were not. The improved learning outcomes that this study showed are extremely impressive. 86% of pupils on the programme moved to on or above the target in reading, compared to 56% in the non-STEP group. 70% of pupils met their targets for maths, compared to 30% for the non-STEP group, while 75% and 62% were on or above target for English comprehension and spelling respectively, compared to 43 and 30% of the non-STEP group. In Mississippi, in the USA, over a thousand pupils completed the programme over the past three years. And it is no coincidence at all that it was in this state that the US had significant improvement in fourth grade that equivalent to primary six, reading and maths. Something that resulted in Mississippi being awarded a commendation for educational innovation. John Moore, Mississippi House of Representatives said of STEP, and I quote, that it was one of the missing components that we've been searching for for many years in the dynamic to assist struggling students to get the training they need. STEP, he said, has made an extraordinary difference. In addition to improvements in academic results, 
Pupils on the programme have shown significant and marked improvement in emotional control, behaviour, balance, concentration, coordination, attention and well-being. 94% of pupils said that they found their schoolwork much easier and believed that they now had the ability to achieve at school. Furthermore, while certainly not intended to replace PE lessons, pupils on step also benefited from an extra 100 minutes of physical activity per week, and therefore this complements other physical initiatives, the Daily Mile included. The First Minister, as we know, has stated that education, and specifically the reduction in the attainment gap, is her top priority, and that we should judge her on her record on this. Now, while some of us in this chamber may disagree about the details of the disbursement of the attainment fund, narrowing the attainment gap and boosting pupil performance is something about which we all agree and which we all want to put above party politics. And the First Minister has stated in this chamber on numerous occasions that she is open to suggestions on ways to reduce the attainment gap. So I very much hope that this is one which she and John Swinney will consider. Indeed, we are absolutely delighted to hear that the Cabinet Secretary for Education and Skills has agreed to meet with STEP directors to discuss the programme later in the month. As the Cabinet Secretary has himself remarked, the recent released PISA figures made for uncomfortable reading. STEP is a programme which could help us make great strides towards boosting numeracy and literacy amongst the weakest 20% of pupils. We already know that some Scottish councils are taking a very strong interest in STEP, and we have no hesitation whatsoever in recommending others to do so too. How good it would be to see the Cabinet Secretary commit to a significant pilot study of Scottish pupils in primaries four and five, beginning in the autumn of 2017. Presiding officer, I know from my own teacher training days what the devastating impact can be for life if children are written off simply because of a misdiagnosis of their problems. I can empathise wholly with the experiences of Kenny Logan, and so we wish him and his team every success in their endeavours and thank them for the work that they are doing to improve opportunities for all children and to make a real step change in Scottish education. I have great pleasure in moving the motion in my name. Thank you very much, Ms Smith. I call Fulton McGregor to be followed by Brian Whittle. Mr McGregor, please. Thank you, President Officer, and thanks to Liz Smith for bringing this debate to the Chamber. And I'd also like to welcome uh, Kenny Logan and his team to the, the gallery as well. It's uh, fitting for me in some ways uh, to speak in this debate as the last member's debate I brought forward to the Chamber just at the end of last year was actually highlighting the year of walking and the benefits that physical exercise can have on a number of health outcomes. Um, I know that Brian Whittle um, also um, spoke in that debate. The Scottish Government is committed to increasing um, the physical activity for young people. 200,000 primary aged children now take part in the Daily Mile initiative, as was mentioned by Liz Smith, and that's right across Scotland. And that's also in line with the Curriculum for Excellence ag agenda, which places emphasis on sport and PE as key elements of learning. And I always think that these type of debates offer a good opportunity to talk about the great work that goes on in, across the constituency. So when I decided to speak in tonight's debate, in my office contacted four of the local primary schools to find out if they were doing anything like the STEP or the Daily Mile and how they found it. And I'm pleased to say that all four that we contacted uh, are doing the Daily Mile and find it an extremely beneficial part of the curriculum. For example, Greenhill Primary School are involved in the National Walk to School Week. In addition to having a play leader scheme to promote physical activity in the playground, they also work in partnership with Albion Rovers Football Club and the Parent for Action Safe Play, the latter who are carrying out an eight-week programme with the primary twos in the near future. St Pat's Primary School nearby, a school that I visited recently and I'm pleased to say was the school that I attended my first assembly as an MSP. As part of the Daily Mile each week, the children there walk or run around in Beth Park, which was the part mentioned in my recent members' debate and now has a designated one-mile walk route through the work and initiative of New College Lanarkshire Students Association. They also have a health week every June where local sports groups come into the school and discuss healthy, healthy eating, fitness and exercise, and that includes the Bannon Fitness Club eh, and dance groups. Most schools, it would be fair to say, have a similar ethos and promote exercise and health through a number of means, including their after-school clubs and the like. 
and the other two schools that I contacted specifically um, for today's purposes, Christen Primary and Karen Bro Primary, both do the Daily Mile and have other uh, activities, um, such as uh, in Christen, for example, uh, running the active schools course through the, the local authority. Karen Bro Primary, as it happens, is where two of my young nephews attend. So I always think there's nothing better than actually asking the pupils direct what they think. So just about an hour, an hour and a half ago, uh, when they get in from school, I phoned them both and asked them what they thought. Sim a simple question. What, did they do the Royal Mail, uh, the Royal Mail, that's how you say the, the Daily Mail uh, at school and what they thought of it? And Braden, my oldest nephew, said, it's good because it keeps us out of school. Uh, I run around the school eight times and it makes me feel good. My younger nephew, Flynn, said, eh, it's good. I get to run around the school with my class and it keeps me fit. So two, uh, two uh, good qualifications for, the, for the, the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail is free and therefore it's inclusive. And this can be an important step in areas of deprivation, such as some of, the schools, such as some of those served by the schools mentioned. That said, I think Liz Smith has talked uh, at length about the STEP programme and uh, it sounds very impressive, and, as are other initiatives. And these uh, initiatives shouldn't be in competition with each other, and I don't believe that they are. I think that every school should be able to make the decision of what uh, initiative best meets their needs for the young people they've got and the area that they serve. And I believe uh, fully that head teachers are and, and do um, make these decisions every day. At the end of the day, to sum up, the, the most important thing for me is that children in our schools are offered an opportunity to be involved in regular exercise, as we know this improves a whole range of outcomes for them. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Mr McGregor. I call Brian Whittle, be followed by Daniel Johnson. Mr Whittle, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and can I congratulate my colleague Liz Smith on bringing this motion to the Parliament. As she well knows, this is something I'm really passionate about, and, and nice to see Kenny and his team in the gallery. Now, when I was in primary four in my school days, we played football at, at every opportunity with a tennis ball because that's all we're allowed to play with. One primary four against the other, 30 aside for a week before resetting the score. The game started at 8.30 a.m. every day and truanting, kids were dragging their parents out to get them to school to get to the game. The P5s, P6s and P7s were doing the same, crisscrossing the playground at full pelt. It was like playing football in Sucky Hall Street on a Saturday. <laughs> And I sense all the health and safety officers passing out, but nobody got mashed or killed. I played football, I played, I played in goal for the school in the inter-schools tournament. And I have to say it was a, a football career that was tragically cut short through a severe lack of talent. But we had British Bulldogs, do we remember that? And the school sports day was a big deal in those days. All the school turned out, parents in their droves, for weeks before we were practicing in the playground. We would get home and practice some more, or put the jumpers down for goalposts, or race each other on our bikes. That's where I discovered what I could put one foot in front of the other faster than most, and I joined a running club. We were so excited about going to secondary school because we would get to play rugby. The thing is, by the time we got there, we already had hand-eye coordination and movement skills and agility and speed and basic fitness. In other words, we had a good grounding in physical literacy. Much as I may lament the fact that it's not my day anymore and that times have moved on, physical literacy and activity remains as important now to the development of our children as it has ever been. The kind of activity I was describing has all but disappeared. We even have some schools reporting that, they, that running in the playground is banned in case the pupils bump into each other. Competitive sport has somehow been eliminated in some quarters, which might be the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah. In other words, in the interest of progress, inactivity has now become the norm. Our kids are more likely to be inactive, more likely to have weight issues, more likely to have poor mental health problems, and less likely to take part in sport, especially in less affluent areas. Lack of leadership and opportunity is setting them up for a, for, for a life of inactivity and potentially unhealthy lifestyle. Now, I used to chair the Scottish Coaches Association, and I'm a member of the European Coaches Association. And I often hear coaches saying that kids today are not like they used to be. And this is undoubtedly true. Although I recognise we cannot set the clock back, we must endeavour to ensure that physical literacy pathways are as an integral part of a child's education as reading and writing. Because as is widely recognised, there's an intrinsic correlation between physical literacy and academic achievement, not to mention positively affecting behavioural patterns in the classroom. Now, we cannot go back 
But to go forwards, we must find a delivery framework for the physical literacy education of our children, which is universally accessible, but also specific to the individual. The STEP programme is tried and tested with measured physical, emotional and academic outcomes, especially in the lower percentiles. It speaks directly to balance and coordination, eye tracking and proprioception. And just as important, it's simple to deliver and time efficient. And that's not as mentioning delivering inclusivity, increased opportunity, self-awareness and achievement, confidence, aspiration and self-belief, all eminently transferable skills. The attainment gap, health inequality, inequality of opportunity are buzzwords that are often heard in this chamber. The reality is we are as far from tackling these issues as we ever were. In fact, despite the genuine will across this chamber and investment from all parties across the years, the gap continues to grow. Let's be brave. Do something different. Because unless we are prepared to accept the issue of declining physical literacy and activity in our children and the impact this has on their potential achievement and long-term health, these issues cannot be resolved. Deputy Presiding Officer, in conclusion, there is no need to reinvent the wheel. The STEP programme is successful, available and ready to roll out in our schools. Let's at least trial it and give our children, irrespective of background and personal circumstance, the opportunity to have an active, healthy lifestyle. Thank you very much, Mr Whittle. I got exhausted listening to your energy there as well. Uh, I call Daniel Johnson to be followed by Oliver Mundell. Mr Johnson, please. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. First of all, let me uh, add my welcome to Liz Smith for bringing this debate to this chamber. I think it's very important. I think she put it very well at the beginning. I think it's vital. If we're serious about tackling the attainment gap, about proving education for all, it's vital that we actually broaden and deepen our understanding of what education is what it, uh, it, it contains and what it's for. Indeed, when I was preparing for this debate, I have to say I was, I was a little bit put off by the definition of physical literacy. Mastering the core physical skills of balance, coordination and eye tracking through personalised exercise. Now, I say that because anyone who's watched me play tennis uh, will know immediately that I know very little about many of those things. Um, Although, in all seriousness, um, listening to the Kenny Logan story has echoes for me, because at the age of 35, I received a diagnosis as having ADHD. And looking at the contents of the STEP programme, I recognised the benefits that a programme like that could have for somebody like me, rather than the frustrations I had with much of my education. So as we look at this debate, I think that it is vitally important that we introduce, in a, a renewed way, the idea of physicality into our education system. It's vital that we understand that there is a direct link between physical understanding, learning, knowledge and ability and educational ability. But overall, and, and specifically, there are also key benefits for people who have conditions such as ADHD and dyslexia. So I think the STEP programme is very interesting. As Liz Smith uh, outlined, a, 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 a tailored programme that specifically looks at very key elements of, of physical understanding and capability. But I think more importantly than that was some of the findings in the report that, that, that impressed me was the, the sense of achievement and changes in attitude that it brought. Because I think we all know, and we have all discussed it many times, how important those things are for attainment in schools. Indeed, del this delivered through a programme which has twice daily exercises of 10 minutes. So I think we do need to look at this. We need to, as I say, improve our understanding as the physical as being part of our uh, education. Because as Brian Whittle has just outlined. We live in a physical world. Our ability to engage with our daily lives is vital that we have that physical understanding and capability. Indeed, we have lifestyles which are increasingly sedentary, occupations which increasingly put us behind desks. So a programme such as this, I can see how it can change habits and form behaviours and norms for the rest of people's lives. But I think broad, broadly, if people are to have truly fulfilled lives, if we are serious about well-being as being one of the key objectives for education, I think the importance of physical literacy is all too clear. Indeed, there's other examples such as forest schools in our, uh, 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 in our schools, and also there was a very interesting recent report about the improvements on mental health that just being involved in scouts can have. And I think we need to look at all of these things in the round as we consider what our education system should and shouldn't do. But perhaps most impressively, the, what the STEP programme uh, 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 achieves is around academic uh, improvement and attainment. 76% improvements in English, 70% improvements in maths, uh, 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 improvements in reading and spelling. I think it's very clear 
the, the benefits that, the, the, that um, uh, physical literacy can bring to academic attainment. But there's also the clear bottom line improvements in health. We all know the, the uh, importance of tackling childhood obesity. And I think, again, Brian Whittle outlined that very well. But finally, I would just like to briefly mention ADHD and dyslexia. We are at the beginning of a, a complete revolution in our understanding how the brain works, how neural pathways uh, are altered and formed. I mean, indeed, this notion that the brain is a static thing once you re reach adulthood is not true. Exercise is proven to actually improve and uh, promote neuron growth. And so there is a growing body of evidence about the link between spatial awareness and physical ability and dyslexia. Uh, likewise, um, the uh, improvements that exercises such as these can have for people with ADHD in terms of proving focus and concentra concentration are very clear. Those are both linked to both training the mind to concentrate, but also the impacts on brain chemistry. So I'd really commend um, uh, the, the bringing forward this debate and thank um, uh, the opportunity to talk about these issues. Thank you very much, Mr Johnson. Paul Oliver Mundell to be followed by Elaine Smith, the last speaker in the open debate. Mr Mundell, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to begin by joining colleagues in commending Liz Smith uh, on securing the time uh, for this important debate. And it's an issue I know that she's rightly uh, very passionate about. As someone who's struggled with both uh, dyspraxia and dyslexia, I know all too well some of the challenges young people and their families face and how often uh, those additional learning needs mean that those individuals find themselves as the victims of the attainment gap. I can also empathise with many of the remarks Kenny Logan has made in relation to his own experiences and I would also like to personally thank him for the time and energy and commitment uh, he's shown to this cause because it really does make a difference to young people to have a successful role model and to see those from outside politics bringing forward ideas such as this. From speaking to my constituents, uh, particularly at a time when learning support resources are under strain, it is clear to me that many highly capable children are being denied the support they need to fulfil their potential and it's not good enough. I hope that we can all recognise that something needs to change and I believe we'll be missing a major opportunity, not just to support those with specific learning difficulties, but all those who are struggling with numeracy and literacy if we don't take advantage of the STEP programme. I was very lucky in the support I received from a great many people, particularly during my time at Moffat Academy. And while the list is too long to name everyone, I have no doubt whatsoever that I wouldn't be making this speech, never mind would I have made it to university, if it hadn't been for Douglas Lipton, Lilius Nicol, Donald Hastings, or my first classroom assistant, Mrs Rowley. All dedicated individuals who went above and beyond and who were always looking for new ideas to help me learn. I was also very lucky to have determined parents who weren't willing to take no for an answer and who weren't willing to accept that at my first parent ev parents' evening that the reason that none of my work was on display with the rest of my class was, that because, was because that I was too slow or too lazy. However, the problem is that not everyone is so fortunate. Not all teachers, support staff in schools are as well equipped. And as results in people's experience show, far too many children are being left behind. It is also from my own experiences that I've come across physical literacy and seen its benefits firsthand. I remember sitting at the STEP programme launch last year and recognising many of the exercises that feature in their video explaining their work. The beauty and what makes STEP so important is not just that it brings together a whole range of exercises and activities and combines them into a coherent and measurable programme, but rather, that having to go out and, but that rather than having to go out and search for them, all the exercises are immediately available from a single source and are tailored to the individual needs and the level of ability of the child. What's more is that it's been shown to work and is popular with both the teachers and the pupils who've benefited from it, both uh, in England and the USA. My colleagues have already highlighted much of the evidence of its success, and I'll refrain from repeating it. However, I must stress that at a time where new ideas are badly needed, and we want to improve the use of technology in education in our schools, that this is a clear opportunity for action. I hope, therefore, that the Minister will reflect carefully on today's debate 
and do what she can, both to enable and encourage schools to take part in the STEP programme and to promote the benefits of physical literacy more generally. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Elaine Smith. Ms Smith, please. Thank you, President Officer, and congratulations to Liz Smith on securing this debate. And I apologise that I wasn't able to attend the launch of the step I had uh, in last year. I had intended to, but unfortunately was unable to. At the start of the new year, I think it's fitting that we're discussing education, since a good resolution is to have bolder ambitions for children in Scotland. Now, presiding officer, members' debates traditionally tend to be less confrontational, and it's also prudent not to challenge the minister too much if you hope to achieve a favourable outcome. However, that doesn't mean completely letting the government off the hook. So before I talk further about STEP, I think we need to consider the background of education in Scotland at the moment. And in this month of January, it's also pertinent, I think, to quote our national bard Burns, who pointed out that facts are tools that win a ding. And one extremely concerning fact is that our education system is currently failing some of our children. Scotland has slipped from 6th in the world to 23rd for reading since 2000, from 9th to 24th in maths since 2003, and in science from 10th to 19th since 2006. Now, I know that we all agree right across the chamber that this is not good enough, and it needs urgent attention and investment to restore our once world-class education system to its former success. The attainment gap is a problem for all children, but it's particularly concerning for those with additional support needs. Presiding officer, as well, we need to consider the whole school environment and how important that is to learning. And we know, for example, that being hungry and thirsty impacts massively on children's ability to learn. And that's one reason why I've been a long time campaigner for free school meals, fruit and water provision in our schools. And we also know that physical literacy can specifically help children with additional needs by improving their concentration and awareness. Alongside this, it helps to improve general health and highlights the import in highlighting the importance of physical activity as part of the learning process for our children. And we can't underestimate uh, the importance of this, particularly given the Active Healthy Kids Report Card, a study of 38 countries across the world, which recently placed Scotland last in physical activity among children. So, turning to step, we've already heard that it's a programme of exercises performed twice a day for 10 minutes and focuses in particular on balance, eye tracking and coordination, aiming to make physical uh, activity part of children's everyday learning. And improving physical literacy is particularly advantageous for children and young people who can find it difficult to concentrate, such as those with dyslexia and autism. As Deputy Convener of the Cross Party Group on Dyslexia, and the mother of a rugby playing dyslexic son, I was particularly pleased to see the STEP programme as championed by Kenny Logan, the former Scotland international rugby player who is dyslexic, and I welcome Kenny, as others have done, to the, the gallery tonight. STEP also has the backing of the British Dyslexia Association, who have supported the findings of the pilot study. And I think it's just worth repeating that 86% of kids who took part in the UK pilot study had improved reading after 12 months, 76% improved English and 70% improved maths. Anything that helps children to learn more efficiently, to socialise more easily and participate more positively, both inside and outside the classroom, should be worthy of our attention. And it, it would certainly, I think, have helped my own son, who happily did get a reasonably early diagnosis and is now at university studying engineering. But I think that getting an early diagnosis and getting the support very much helps with that. In conclusion, uh, I must once again return to the government's responsibility and address the key barrier to any programme like this, and that, of course, is funding. I think the government must be prepared not only to invest more in our education system, but also to consider centrally funding programmes like STEP so that schools can take advantage of innovative ways to help all children to learn and grow. You know, at about a pound a day per child, I don't think that that's particularly over the top in terms of expenditure with such good outcomes. Once again, I congratulate Liz Smith and I hope that the programme can be considered across Scotland so that physical literacy becomes a core part of the school day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms Smith. I call on Shirley Ann Somerville to close for the Government. Minister, seven minutes, please. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd also thank uh, Liz Smith for raising this motion and bringing it to the Chamber today and welcome the contributions that have been made. It's always a pleasure to listen to Brian Whittle talk in the Chamber, particularly on a subject like this, because as you said yourself, Presiding Officer, the energy and the passion on this is, is very um, clear. It was also, um, I think, my apologies, President Officer. It, it was also very pertinent to hear from the MSPs themselves about their personal experiences. Daniel Johnston um, and Oliver Mundell, I think, added a great deal to the debate about how they had dealt with their experiences at school and the individuals within their schools um, who had helped them through that in, in Oliver Mundell's case um, and, and likewise for, for Daniel Johnston for his own experiences. Um, as others have said, it is great to see Kenny Logan and others here in, in the chamber um, today, um, and I'm very uh, pleased to have this opportunity to um, close this debate for the Government on the STEP programme, because it is very, very important when we hear about initiatives like STEP that they can make a contribution to young people and to, to children realising their full potential. As has been mentioned by others, health and wellbeing is one of the eight curricular areas in the curriculum for excellence, with physical education, physical activity and sport being a key component. Health and wellbeing's substantial importance is reflected in its position at the centre of the curriculum and at the heart of children's learning. It's a central focus of the Scottish Attainment Challenge and the National Improvement Framework for Education. And along with literacy and numeracy, it is one of the three core areas that are the responsibility of all staff within a school. Now, this government is very clear that creating a culture in which healthy behaviours are the norm must start in the very early years so that children and young people can develop a genuine lifelong habit of activity, activity that has many health, social and economic benefits, which the members have already spoken about. Research shows it's vitally important that children are active before they reach school age, and that can be through active play, which not only improves coordination, but social skills with peers, siblings, parents, grandparents and nursery workers. Now, once children do reach school age, I'm delighted to say that 98% of schools provide their pupils with two hours or two periods of physical education per week, and this compares with less than 10% in 2004-05. And I know Brian Whittle did uh, have a rather despairing picture of the young people of today, but I would point out to him that in 2015, 73% of children did an average of 60 minutes or more of physical activity, including school-based activity, um, per day. So there is um, hope for our children and young people yet. But we aren't complacent, and as Brian Whittle and others have said, there is much more that needs to be done, which is why we will continue to support PE provision to maintain and improve the quality of PE and physical activity to ensure that it's inclusive and that this is a position which the government has within its overarching aims of raising attainment. Now, the Daily Mail has been mentioned by uh, members, and it was, of course, part of this government's uh, manifesto that Scotland would become the first Daily Mail nation. Over 800 primary schools across the country have now started their own Daily Mile programme, adapting that basic idea to meet their own circumstances and needs. And it was great to hear of some of the work that's going on in the constituencies, including Fulton McGregor's and the direct <coughs> feedback from the young people. Certainly when it comes to my own daughters, I think they view it as a good opportunity for gossip in the playground. Um, so that certainly encourages um, them on their Daily Mile. But whatever your reasons for enjoying the Daily Mile, it does seem to be going down well within the primary schools and enjoyed by the young people there. It can and does work for many schools, but there are, of course, other examples of how physical activity can be embedded into the daily life of a school that can be explored as well. Now, one example of that is the Better Movers and Thinkers programme, or BMT, an innovative and exciting movement and learning programme delivered free by Education Scotland. BMT has raised performance standards and created a step change in the learning and teaching of PE. The BMT approach is completely inclusive as it supports children and young people to identify and achieve their individual physical and cognitive potential. It's been developed from a range of evidence-based fields, including child development, cognitive neuroscience and pedagogy. The BMT approach has a positive effect on all children by encouraging and supporting their engagement in the learning process, regardless of their starting ability or any additional support needs they might have. 
children like BMT as an approach to physical education and using this approach in the gym and in the classroom has prompted teachers to report improvements in concentration and better peer engagement in all aspects of the curriculum. Certainly. Liz Smith. I'm, I'm very grateful to the Minister for taking an intervention, and I think she's uh, quite right to, to raise these points. But on that specific issue, we were delighted to learn that the Cabinet Secretary will be meeting uh, the STEP group uh, at the end of the month. Uh, would, th would the government commit today to being in a position where the discussion about some of the improvements you've just named for another um, very impressive programme we would do the same thing with the STEP programme to ensure that, as I say, that what the feedback from teachers is very good and that clearly we've got some uh, very positive comments that are coming from local authorities that we would have a commitment from the government to at least examine that in full. Minister. Well, as, as you mentioned in your opening, as, as Liz Smith opened in her, um, mentioned in her opening speech, uh, the Cabinet Secretary is, is due to meet Kenny Logan and others, I think on the 25th of January, to uh, discuss this. I don't want to preempt that, that discussion, um, certainly not with the Cabinet Secretary, to make an announcement um, today. But the final decision on what approaches are to be used in schools, whether it's the Daily Mile or other initiatives, rests with the teachers and the local authorities. And as members have said, they are very well placed to decide how the curriculum is delivered in that area. But I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary will discuss that in uh, much greater detail with Kenny Logan um, when he meets them at the end of this month. Now, we are aware that the STEP programme has been promoted for children who um, have dyslexia. And I want to be clear that as well as ensuring our children and young people have an active start in life, this government is committed to ensuring all children and young people get the support they need to realise their full potential. So to ensure this happens, the Scottish Government has taken forward a range of actions, including Doran Review, the recommendations from the Education and Culture Committee's report on the attainment of pupils with sensory impairment and the mainstream review. For children and young people with dyslexia, education authorities have a duty to identify, meet and review the additional support needs of all their pupils. And Education Scotland consider this as part of their inspection programme. To help all teachers address the needs of their pupils with dyslexia, this government supported the development of the Addressing Dyslexia Toolkit, which includes material on effectively identifying and supporting pupils, increasing accessibility for teachers, and information for education authorities on the implementation of the toolkit. The Dyslexia Making Sense Working Group supports the delivery of the five work streams, including the toolkit, recommended from the Making Sense Review Report published by Education Scotland in 2014. The government also provides grant funding of £100,000 per year to Dyslexia Scotland to assist them with their critical work towards the recommendations of the, re the review report. In addition to their wide range of valued and support services across Scotland and their network of volunteer-led branches, provision of such support networks and services will allow every pupil in Scotland to experience the broad general education they are entitled to under the Curriculum for Excellence. In summing up, Presiding Officer, this government doesn't doubt the benefits of a programme like STEP and believes that there are initiatives like that that have a very positive impact on the learning needs of our children and young people. The Deputy First Minister, as I said, will meet with Kenny Logan um, about the STEP programme on the 25th of January, and I'm sure we all look forward uh, to finding out about the discussions that they've had and what will follow from that. So thank you very much to Liz Smith again for bringing this to the Chamber, and I look forward to continuing the debate along with the Cabinet Secretary at the end of this month. Now that concludes the debate, and I thank members for very interesting contributions, and I'll close this meeting.